Welcome back to the Anxiety Slayer podcast. I'm Shan Vanderleek, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with therapist, mind body health specialist, and author of When Women Rise, Dr. Michelle Kambolis. We're going to talk about everyday practices to strengthen your mind, body, and soul. Dr. Kambolis is clinical director of the Harborside Counseling Center in Vancouver. She's a mind body health specialist, meditation teacher, registered therapist and an acclaimed author and speaker. She also co-hosts live streamed meditations on IGTV for thousands of followers all over the world. And her new book, When Women Rise, is a timely, transformative, and inspiring guide for women who want to bring more joy and peace into their lives. This goddess shines. Welcome to This Sacred Life, Dr. Kim Bolas. Thank you for that beautiful introduction, Shen. I'm I'm so happy to be joining you. And um, we talked a little bit about ahead of time about some of the areas that we're going to be moving into. And um, I'm greatly looking forward to this conversation. I am too. I really enjoyed reading your book and getting to learn a little bit more about you and how you're showing up in the world and sharing your gifts. And oh my goodness. Thank you for your contribution. To be able to find openings to support and to share all that I've garnered from um, so many teachers that have come before me, is it's really nourishing. And not only for the person that I'm working with, but it's nourishing for me. And I really can see how much we're, we're here to do the work together. And as one person heals, it just moves the, the needle a little bit further towards our greatest well-being as a human family. Many of our listeners are feeling completely fried right now. Yeah. And no surprise, right? It's just been a really interesting ride these last couple of years. What I'd like to do is begin by having a conversation about how we can comfort our nervous systems? That is the pivotal question, isn't it? And one so many of us are asking ourselves, and I think many among us already went into the pandemic taxed by this culture of stress and toxic overdoing and proving and striving and comparing and competing. And then we went into, it's been now, we're going on the third year of uncertainty mm-hmm. and loss and grief and fear that's gone hand in hand with the pandemic. And so the cumulative impact on our mind body system has been debilitating for many. So finding a way towards soothing our nervous system is really critical. It's key. And it comes back to practices that are going to support the parasympathetic nervous system, that calming response in the body, decreasing our fight or flight. So I'm happy to unpack some of those. The goal here is to help as many as we can self-heal and consciously create a life they love so that even when things are tough, when things are pulling at us in so many different directions, we still know how to soothe ourselves and how to get to that balance point that allows for so much more than the pain and suffering. I think that the best starting point and one of the most potent healing mechanisms that we have is our breath. And we take 20,000 breaths a day, and that's 20,000 invitations to soothe ourselves. So just taking a pause and coming home to the sensation of our breath, taking a low and slow breath and extending the exhale leads to a cascade of neurochemicals being released from our brain system, calming neurochemicals, sending the message to our body that we're safe. So, and it's so simple and it's free and it's available to us anywhere and anytime. 
when I talk with people who are really struggling with anxiety, breath work is key to soothing. Yes. Yes. We often recognize that and share the long exhale, which is what I think you're talking about. Mm -hmm. The long exhale, four, four, six, two breathing. So breathing in for four, holding for four, exhaling for six, holding for two. Uh, Vu breathing or Vu chanting is extraordinary for toning the vagal nerve, which is that a nerve system that connects body and mind. Let's do that. Vu chanting? Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. So I like to place a hand on the heart and a hand at the belly, whatever's comfortable, and just taking a moment where you are, closing the eyes if that works for you. If not, just resting the gaze lightly in front of you really taking a moment to settle into the body. And when you're ready, taking a low and slow breath in. And at the exhale, a long, low vu sound. Feeling the vibration through the body, another inhale. And again, Inhale, sending that vibration all the way down into the lower area of the body. Wow. I can see how doing that for several rounds of your breath could really bring you into a sweet spot. The vibration tones that vagal nerve system and sends a healing, soothing current throughout your whole body, releasing, relaxing neurochemicals and um, really rooting you in the body. Anxiety takes us out of the body. And that VU technique allows us to kind of break up and metabolize the density of all that we're carrying. And what was cool about it too, is even though I wasn't making the sound because I, I didn't want to confuse the recording, I just wanted to hear your voice. I was still getting the benefit from what you were doing, just being a part of it and being involved in it. I, I love it. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, we, we match, right? We co-create our lived experience. And so when you're with someone who is calming their limbic system, then you, you benefit from, from that yourself. And it's fun too. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, you can lighten up a little bit and be like, yeah, I'm doing some voo chanting right now. Well, and that leads right into this next question that I have is, what do you recommend that we do to better empower ourselves during this wild ride on planet Earth and to lighten up a little bit so that we can feel that, that we're standing in our power a bit more than, than we might feel we are right now? I think that one of the things most of us are struggling with are really the basics, the foundational elements of, of our well-being. And so many people that I speak with now are struggling with sleep disorders, sleep disruption, turning to substances. And oftentimes that means an increase in alcohol intake or caffeine or sugar and and so one of the places that I start is really just doing an audit of what are my habits? What are the maladaptive coping mechanisms that I'm leaning into? And where can I start to shift my daily practices so that I'm supporting myself better? Just starting where you are. And if you're able to minimize stimulants like sugar and caffeine and alcohol. That's a beautiful way to support your body right now. If you're able to focus on your sleep hygiene and 
put technology away a little bit earlier in the day and practice soothing tools like meditation and imagery or a little bit of gentle movement and yoga before you go to bed, that may be the place to start for you. And so the answer is different for everybody. And your solution to supporting your highest well being is as unique as you are. But if we just simply take a pause and ask ourselves, what do I most need in this moment? Mm, yes. The answers yes. come because we have an inner wisdom and inner knowing that is so vast. It just takes two wings awareness and compassion. Oh, I love that so much. One of my practices during the winter months is hot salt baths on special nights, oil massage before the hot salt bath, and just being extra sweet to my body and thanking her for being so strong and flexible and willing to put up with many of my shenanigans, forming a just a sweeter relationship, I guess, with my body. And it's made such a big difference. Just recently, I decided that I didn't need to have coffee anymore. And I wasn't a big coffee drinker, Michelle, but I would start the day with a cup of coffee. And I started messing around it, you know, make healthier creamers, like do these things so I wasn't having sugar in my coffee. And, all. and I just finally was like, just enough. My body doesn't want coffee anymore. I've switched very easily over to some wonderful black tea to make a change. I still get a little bit of caffeine. I'm, I'm enjoying the taste. I know it's better for my body. And I'm already a tea drinker anyway. I just normally don't drink black tea. And I thought, well, that's a nice way to shift. I bring it up because it's just a, a little shift that's another sweet choice that I'm making for myself. They all add up. They all add up. It's these sort of micro moments that yes. really create the building blocks of our life. And so there was an inner question that you asked that was so important. Does this serve me? And when you ask that question, the answer emerged so beautifully. And it didn't align with your intention towards developing that sweet, relationship with your body that you're that you're talking about. Yeah, and the more we listen, the more the floodgates open with new information. And it's okay if it's if it's not and I I want to say this it's really important because sometimes we can listen and listen and listen and be like, "But I'm not hearing anything. You know, nothing's coming up for me. <laughs> What's going on? I'm really trying to be mindful." It just takes practice. And often it, it is just a, it's just a whisper. It's just that feather touch that if we, that, that if we pay attention to that, it's one little change. It's the tea, it's the massage, it's the putting the screens down a little bit earlier. It's please giving yourself a break from the media in all forms. All of these choices that we can make to empower ourselves and to feel that much stronger because we are listening to ourselves and we're not letting anyone else live in our heads if we're taking a break from all of this, uh, what could be described as media madness or the, yeah. the duality that we're seeing so in our face. When we get still enough, long enough, we begin to really hear our own inner voice. And there is a lot of noise interfering with our ability to hear the true self. Mm -hmm. And when we turn inward, you know, do that kind of work or create openings to really listen in. If we're not hearing, you know, as you say, the, the answer, that guiding voice, that's great information too. Just to take a moment to acknowledge that, okay, it's feeling fuzzy right now. I'm feeling confused. I'm feeling a lack of ability to really hear myself, to compassionately open and accept that state mm -hmm. is such a, a kind 
and friendly act because so often we, we believe that our growth should look a certain way. So often we're in the not knowing. Mm -hmm. So to forgive ourselves and to be kind to ourselves while we're in the not knowing is so important. One thing I know for sure with all of the women I've worked with over the years and with all of the people who are a part of the Anxiety Slayer community and this sacred life, we're just so freaking hard on ourselves. It's just the beatings will continue until morale improves type behavior. Mm -hmm. and we deserve better. And these practices, whether it be chanting or breathing or meditating or yoga or getting out in nature or doing that one sweet thing before your bath or in the bath, etc., gets you much closer to that, oh, I can be compassionately aware. I can be kind. I don't have to be impatient with myself. I can exhale. I think that self-compassion is something that almost everyone struggles with. And it's such an expression of our cultural system that focuses on the external, that tells us that we need to be more, do more, add more. When we hit that realization of, okay, wow, I, I can just be still. I can just be in the truth of who I am right now. And I am already whole. I was born whole. Nothing that anyone tells me or uh, nothing that happens to me is going to change that. Ooh, that is a powerful opening. On your website, you have a, a paragraph that I was really moved by that says, we want less chaos and more tenderness. We yearn for a more compassionate relationship with ourselves, our partners, and especially our children. But in the pressure to be all things to all people, our endurance and strength is slowly depleted. At times we feel devoured by the unconscious expectations coming at us at every turn. That just encapsulates what so many of us are feeling and why it's so incredibly important to read a book like When Women Rise, to listen to your meditations, to show up for the podcasts and the, the choices that support us and to also just let it all be. Get on the floor and rest in Shavasana for a while. I mean, sometimes that's the hardest thing to do. <laughs> Yesterday when I was practicing, I was, I was laying down and I was in that really, that really monkey mind space of, oh, you know, this is good that you're doing this. But really, what you need to be, and, and I just started to laugh at myself and sink in a little bit deeper. And my practice didn't last as long, but, <laughs> but, it, but it did happen. And I, and I laughed about it and will return again, as we do, without that judgment and shame and all of that. But knowing that, hey, you know what? Resting in Shavasana for 10 minutes and doing a gentle yoga practice, that's a good day. And that's you showing up for yourself yeah, in such a beautiful way for all of it. And our practice is meant to show us what's there. And if that's monkey mind, you want to see that. You want, you know, to, that's the, the, the gateway to be able to just observe what's happening in the moment, knowing that that state has a beginning and a middle and an end. And as you observe it and compassionately and just bear witness to your felt experience with non-judgment, not wishing it away, not grasping onto pleasant experiences or pushing away negative experiences, we see that it's just all part of the sea of our experience. And so mm -hmm. for that moment, it was discomfort. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love being able to just be like, oh, the awareness of the awareness, right? <laughs> just like, oh, well, isn't that interesting? Well, let's see. Let's see what we can do. And that's such an awakening, that moment of realization where you can see, 
oh, okay, wait a minute. It's not all so solid. Those thoughts are a part of my experiences, but they are not me. I am the observer. I am the big S self observing yes. those thought forms. And so maybe I don't have to take it quite so seriously. <laughs> maybe I don't have to add more to the story. I mean, uh, Sarah Brock calls that, you know, the second arrow. The first arrow is the pain of the experience. The second arrow is the way that we judge ourselves for it or add more to the story. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, one of the things that I would love to invite you to do, if you're available for it, is to walk us through your return to calm meditation that is inspired by the autogenic training that you share in your book. Oh, yes. Let's do it. Let's, let's enter into practice together. just allowing the eyelids to gently close and the body to become still and bringing your attention to the rhythm of the breath as you breathe through the nose if that's available to you and you might imagine letting the breath trace the path of a rolling hill rising on the in-breath and falling on the out breath. And gently slowing the breath. Rising for the count of one, two, three, four, five, and falling five, four. Three, two, one. And letting the breath restore you to the peace of this moment. And you might whisper inwardly, I am here and I am calm. Letting the body feel the earth cradling it with unwavering care as you release the hold of the day and may you find yourself in a moment of rest. Noticing now the sensations at the arms. arms heavy the left arm is heavy the right arm is heavy both arms are heavy and repeating these words inwardly I am here and I am calm. And bringing full attention now to the legs. Noticing the sensations there. And the legs too begin to find stillness. Legs are heavy. And the left leg is heavy. The right leg is heavy. Both of the legs are heavy. And repeating these words again. I am here. And I am calm. Well, 
Let the mind dream of sun and sand and the healing warmth running its current through your tired bones. And the heart tracing a path to the hands, blowing life like a wise woman's breath on frosty fingers. And notice the sensations at the hands. Hands are warm. The left hand is warm. The right hand is warm. Both hands are warm. Repeating these words, I am here and I am calm. With each inhale and exhale, you're soothed and restored and warmed to your bones. Like campfire sticks, the wise woman rubs her hands together and places them against your icy feet. Her body heats yours, bringing attention to the feet and noticing any sensations there, anything that is there to be felt. Feet are warm. The left foot is warm. The right foot is warm. Both feet are warm. Repeating these words, I am here and I am calm. The abdomen rises and falls, it swells and recedes, soothed in the intimacy of this time. The forehead cools and the mind sees. You might place the hand at the heart center Heartbeat steady, body warm and heavy. Repeating these words, I am here and I am calm and may it always be so. Breathe. Notice and be. That was so beautiful. Thank you for sharing. And what are you noticing, Shan? within yourself as you connect in. I have this warm center of the sun, like Kazemi feeling in my, in my body. I'm just nice and warm and relaxed. When our nervous system is struggling, the blood flows to our core as a way to is part of our survival response so with autogenic training not only is it deeply self-honoring as you described in your own experience but it also supports our body in a very physical way there's a lot happening as you work with that and it doesn't take that much time we all have this time to carve out and give this gift to ourselves. It might not feel like it, 
I'm here to invite you to claim it because it's yours. John Kabat Zinn uh, has been known to say, meditate as though your life depends on it because it does. <laughs> <laughs> And I would add all of these healing practices to that statement. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Before we part ways today, what would you like to leave us with? You have so many gifts to share, I know. So finding the one to leave us with, what comes up for you? Oh, in my heart space, what comes up time and again is a great desire for us all to come home to our own hearts and know that we have just such a great capacity to self-heal. I really want everyone to know that you're already there. You're already perfect. You're already whole. That your soul essence shines beautifully. That the condition of this lifetime means that we add many layers <laughs> that separates us from that truth. But as you lean into and cultivate these practices, which are really a homecoming, we begin to come home to that, to that truth in the most beautiful way. So that's my invitation. So many of us forget that we are absolutely perfect just as we are right now right here right now right here and right now yeah mm. what a pleasure to spend time with you today for me as well i feel this healing current and transmission coming through us and we are beautifully supported. I'm just so grateful to be with you and with your listeners. Oh, thank you so much, Michelle. That was Dr. Michelle Kembolis. Get a copy of When Women Rise at michellekembolis.com or wherever books are sold. Thanks for listening to Anxiety Slayer.